Hey everyone, welcome to my Lilith time lapse and commentary video. Before we get started, if you'd like to see the progress of the painting before we start in this video, definitely check out my last week's Drawing with Dave episode 9. I'll put a link to it down below so you can check that out if you want to see that kind of black and white stage before we get painting. As always, if you like this type of content, definitely feel free to subscribe to the channel. It means everything. All right, let's get started. It was awesome to actually paint her for the first time since seeing her uh, debut at BlizzCon this year. So thank you again for the suggestion on uh, some of the previous week's episodes of Drawing with Dave so we could uh, take a look at her. So basically where I started here, which we did this on my Twitch channel on Friday, which you can always check out at twitch.tv slash Dave Greco uh, I decided to, decided to continue where we had left off with the Drawing with Dave. A lot of people were excited to see that finished. And so I thought we would uh, work on it live in front of everybody. So basically what I'm doing is trying to take that initial sketch, working on a normal layer and slowly build up some layers of highlight on the face so I can kind of bring it towards the viewer a little bit, right? At the same stage, I'm kind of going back and forth between darks and lights, really trying to push that form out. It also lets, gives me a lot of time to go in and figure out those little mistakes like, oh, do I have to shift the eye up a little bit? Do I have to work on the brows? You know, I'm kind of looking back at some more Lilith reference on how her face is constructed. Well, at the same time, kind of creating our own version of Lilith here, right? Like even my versions of her horns behind her, her jawbone are a little bit different. So I definitely took some liberty on how we're gonna handle her design. As you can see, we were kind of going back with some reference right there. But I, as you can see too, is I do like to stay pretty zoomed out. I actually get that question a lot about how zoomed out I stay. I think when I'm working this much of the piece, and I'm hopping from different part to different part, like I always wanna see as much of the piece as I can. I can always zoom into the piece later and really tackle some fine details if I want. But I think at this age, it's good to see as much as I can. Those really fine details aren't super, super important yet. There's still a lot of proportion issues I'm trying to figure out, uh, lighting. I know right here, I'm still looking at trying to figure some shapes in the nose. Um, also, continually readjusting her far eye. The eye and the pupil always continually seems out of place to me. Especially with her eyes when she has different color pupils was actually kind of throwing me quite a bit. So you'll see with me, uh, you'll see me messing with that uh, a lot on it. So even as I'm working on it right here, I can always tell that like, oh, I haven't pushed my darks very far. Everything's very light right now, but that's fine. You know, I kind of treat it like as a, as if I was building up even like a, uh, an oil painting. You know, I would put some glazes and really kind of push everything back later. I kind of work this stuff mentally, kind of like how I used to do a lot of traditional work, especially back in school. And that was a big thing I was actually focused on with this piece is I wanted to keep my brushwork pretty loose. I wanted to kind of get kind of as traditional feeling as possible with it. I wanted like big flat brush strokes. I wanted some areas that feel pretty thick because of it. You know, even leaving some areas messy if it looked pretty good for it. So that right there, I just used a, a light and layer, went with a pretty uh, dark red and kind of just washed over around that neck area. I thought some, uh, some of that red would really pop, especially for this type of character, right? And so right there, again, I'm just going up with some, some lighter values. I wanna keep bringing that out. I don't wanna go crazy with the highlights, but I wanted to see, you know, bring it up a little bit and then, you know, bring the highlights up, push the darks back a little bit, highlights up, darks back a little bit. That's always super, super important. And that's what I'm doing right here. So you can see that a lot of the eyes was still very light. We can start to tackle a little bit more of that darker value. It's also this stage too, and that's what's nice about doing this digital is you know you just copy and paste that, morph, shift it around, change the perspective of it, of her horns, and that always uh, makes it a little bit easier. Well, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, working on this character. Uh, she she's fantastic, you know, she really really is. It's the same thing. Kind of go around to back to the horns, back to the face. You know, I really just trying to take my time and really kind of figure out each little area. And I know at one point, like I'll go back in and actually figure out the shapes of the nose. There was some under part with the nostrils and the nose that I didn't like. We can always go back in and just tweak it, right? 
But I think the biggest thing for me is when I'm working on these is just having patience. I want to do that slow buildup of color and light. You know, you could go too saturated too soon. You know, I kind of have a vision in my head of where I want to bring it. But I think it's worth just taking your time. And then once you get there, like those, you know, little final polished parts will really make it really be well worth the wait. And so really I'm just using normal layers again. You'll see a lot of the layers kind of piling up on the right. Uh, there's, they're really kind of just like nonsense. Like I end up flattening that down most of the time anyway. So basically I'm just slowly building it up. Uh, sometimes I just make a new layer just in case I do something really egregious, I can get rid of it. But most of the time I don't mind just painting on top of each layer over and over and over. All those little things that you leave underneath it is just gonna build up and give those everything else a little more personality. Yeah, right here I'm just going in kind of figuring out some kind of details and how I want the the planes to actually to work and to look on the nose. Yeah, I wanted to keep it pretty subtle. You know, it's actually funny, I was thinking like a lot of the face, leaving it that gray around her jaw and uh, mouth usually is kind of like a big no-no, especially like on female characters because it kind of looks like a five o'clock shadow. But I, with her, I actually thought it was uh, kind of fitting to her character. It doesn't look like a five o'clock shadow to me, but it just looks like there's something unnatural about her skin, which I, I definitely want to embrace. So basically I'm just doing like these big brush strokes over a lot of the early line work on the horns, on the face. You know, I don't mind covering a lot of that up and I don't mind it being super messy. We can just, we can keep pushing and pulling, you know? I think the more you paint and the more you guys keep creating, you're gonna find that you have more and more control over your painting, right? And so you don't mind doing these large things because you always know that, well, I know I can tweak this, I'm gonna pull it, I'm gonna render this down to get it exactly where I want it, at least for the time being. So I'm going back in, just figuring out some more details in her skin. I know at one point I started putting a little bit more color variation in her skin, like, that's one thing too, like instead of like one value on her face, like I had those little pops of red, uh, there's actually a, some cool blues in there. I think that variety of color adds a lot of personality and realism uh, to her face. And also one big thing I wanted to do when I was working on her was this kind of evil glare that she was giving you. Like she's kind of like looking into your soul or something. And so I really wanted to keep those pupils around the, the same area. So same thing, going back in, getting something like the lines, little details. And I knew also that like, oh, you know, her shoulder, all that stuff really is not figured out right now. But it's fine. We'll get to it. At least I, I know when I'm working on it that I'm not going to fret over it too early. That I know I can go down there and really figure it out. You know, I almost did some version of vignetting here. I just, the whole piece was way too bright. bright and I really wanted to focus this area of light on her face. Which I thought would be really cool. Uh, same thing here. You're just kind of going back and forth and looking like, oh, you know, the back of the neck actually looked like it was too far back. It was probably going into her head. And then just kind of re-exploring those shapes, trying to get a little bit more color in the background so we can get the background and the, uh, the head itself to kind of pop off a little bit. You know, a lot of the areas of desaturation will work nicely against areas that are a little bit more saturated. But this is a painting you don't want to go too crazy with. Uh, towards the top of her head, I was just kind of playing with some different textural brushes that I may not normally use, just to try and, uh, trying to break up that brush, you know, that texture variety in the piece just to try to make it feel like a little bit more traditional, you know, while still painting digitally. Uh, so basically, I think I was, I checked out some reference for shoulders and I was like, oh yeah, there's a neck and here's where the shoulder is gonna come down so I can actually get it uh, done properly. You know, if you're always kind of stuck on something that's not looking right, you know, shoot some reference, look at some reference. You know, that's definitely what you should be doing. It doesn't matter where your professional level is, you know, reference, Reference is amazing. Everyone should be using reference. You know, it's great if you can just wing it and do it naturally, but you know, I, I use reference for so many things. Half my phone is just pictures of my own hands at this point. Uh, same thing, I'm just bouncing all over the piece as much as possible, seeing what's working and seeing what's not. You know, people ask me a lot, when am I done with the piece? It's usually when I just feel like I'm done fiddling around, bouncing all over the place, like things feel accomplished. 
I feel like they don't need, need too much more rendering. You know, this is a piece I probably could have spent another uh, four hours rendering really gone really crazy with, but there's some parts of it I liked how loose it was left off at. Uh, so if you guys are wondering, I do have this broken down. It's about 10 minutes long. This was about a four to five hour painting since uh, the sketch that we did with Drawing with Dave. So it's about how long uh, this one took. It actually went pretty quick, uh, especially for what we're doing. Uh, we were usually chatting and painting at the same time, so. Uh, so for these shapes, especially the red shapes coming down from her jaw and her neck, it almost looked like fabric slash hair. Uh, I kind of just went with it based on the initial sketch and kind of see how far I could take it. Um, and then the same thing here too. I'm, I'm still taking some of these areas and I'm pushing them a little bit darker. Some of the light areas a little bit lighter. That's about it. So it was a pretty simple piece. It was a fun piece to work on because it was just really just simple rendering. Just having fun drawing a character that I love. And uh, I can't, you know, I want to thank you guys for even suggesting it. Suggesting it. It was really amazing. Uh, so for next week's episode of Drawing with Dave, I actually am going to be tackling an environment piece. I'm taking my own advice and getting out of my comfort zone. So that's why I wanted to get this done and this time lapse out to you guys because a lot of you guys wanted to see this piece finished up too. All right. You guys are amazing. I'll see you guys in the next video that we have out. All right, guys. Bye.